what happens in minor league baseball, they want their players to be the perfect, do it the corporate way, do it the way it shows to be done, do it the traditional way, do it with this, 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 which goes against what adds to a fan experience. And so there's this clash that's always going to happen when major league baseball has one goal and minor league baseball potentially has another goal. That's a, that's a challenge. Have you heard from anybody in major league baseball, any, any higher ups, or maybe you've heard it through the, the <laughs> grapevine about what they think about what you're doing? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I have. And, you know, I, I've directly or indirectly heard from people that have talked to Manfred about it. And uh, I've, uh, you know, I've got calls from the different leagues um, and it's, you know, it's, it's humbling and it's flattering, but, you know, I understand they, they're not going to be able to do a lot of this, but maybe there's something, maybe, maybe there's something that they can take, but either way, we're just going to keep doing our thing. And I think that's one of the biggest things Walt Disney said is you got to control the controllables. And so many people focus on things they can't control. And so what we're doing is when now we're forming our own banana ball world tour, we can control everything on the experience, which gives us this huge head start to create an experience that no one else can get anywhere else. That's what I love. And I think, unfortunately, Major League Baseball and a lot of other, there's too many things, players union. I mean, they're in a lockout right now. You can't even get, they can't even have their players together right now with the teams. There's too many battles going on. And I just, I, I have no interest in being a part of that. All right. So you say that maybe there are some things that Major League Baseball can, can learn from you. Let's say that you got a call tomorrow from uh, Commissioner Manfred and a team came up. Let's say the Miami Marlins came up. God knows we could use some help in, in promoting the Marlins. Uh, and uh, Derek Jeter wants to sell it to you and you're able to do it. And you become, this, the, uh, you become the owner of the Miami Marlins. Why couldn't you institute some, some of your nutty hijinks? If you can get the players on board. So that has to go with the players union. I think the biggest thing that we've seen is we broke down the barriers and you watch what social media has done. You know, this more than anything, we've broke down the barriers of how people can get to know other people. You get closer to people when you, whether it's Instagram, whether it's podcasts, whether it's anything, you get to know the behind the scenes of the people. I just shared a post on LinkedIn just a couple of days ago, Bill Leroy has become kind of the face for us. One of our players who Barstool Sports actually said the future face of baseball is like, we'll take it. This you know, young guy from Dublin, Dublin, Georgia, you know, he got introduced out of the stands. We had him literally go into the stands, waiting on deck, sitting with all the fans. Now coming to bat from University of North Georgia, Bill Leroy, and he gets up and all the fans cheering and he's high-fiving them going down and coming out. That's an experience all those fans will never forget. It's on video. You're right there with them. You know, major league, imagine, you know, Aaron Judge or Bryce Harper or Mike Trout is literally sitting with you, right, talking to you, hanging out and coming to be introduced. That will never happen. However, what I would challenge is say, all right, how do we get our fans to get to know our players in a better way? It can't just be about them playing baseball. It has to be able to see them real. And I mean, I don't know if there's any major league baseball players right now um, that are really showing themselves behind the scenes, the way they should, showing themselves having fun, showing themselves interacting. So I'd really be about that. And I'd have players that express themselves, more bat flips, more celebrations. Take a book, take a page from WWE. I mean, everybody has a big move. Everybody has a celebration. Everybody has a slogan that they say. Like, that's how you can connect. How do you connect with Mike Trout and Bryce Harper right now? The average person can't do it because no one can play baseball to that ability, but we can connect with the fun little things that they do. You know, what do they like to eat? What are their shoes? What do they do for warmups? What are those unique things? So I would really start break down the barriers and connect with all of our players, find players that want to have fun, express themselves, show their character a little bit more, you know, and, and, and go from there. So it's a long game. You don't just come in this first day and say, here's what we're going to do. You say, this is a vision. We want our fans connected with our players. We want it to be more fun. And let's start, start testing it. Let's have a player do this before an inning. Let's have a player do this when he comes out to the mound. So that's, that's what I would think about doing. It just seems like Major League Baseball is kind of in like this death spiral, which they've been in for a while, in that they're the, the core business of the, is servicing older people because they're the ones that show up to the games. And they have, no interest, and they have no interest in what you're talking about, uh, mm -hmm. by and large. Yeah, they're focusing on their fans now, not their future fans. So like, and, and I'm not saying like, like, I respect Major League Baseball. Obviously, they're a $10 billion fan, a $10 billion plus business, and they have tons of fans. However... <laughs> The young fans, the young fans. And I say it's like, we, we're still figuring it out. But it says something if we have 250,000 more TikTok followers than every Major League Baseball team. There's something that has to be said there because it's, we're driving a young audience. And so I, I would question, they're like, oh, well, our season ticket holders and our corporations are paying all the bills. What about in 10, 20, 30 years? 
Are your sponsors going to be paying the bills when it's, you're not as relevant? Are your corporations going to want to come when the games aren't as fun? How can we focus on those six, seven, eight to 10, 12, 14 year olds and make the game so cool for them? Every social media ages up. Think about this. Started with Facebook in college. It aged up. Then you had Snapchat and Twitter. It started young. I mean, TikTok, which was musically. That was like, you know, eight, 10, 12, 13 year olds. That's all aged up. Start to be cool for the young and you will be cool for the older. They're focused on the older, not the younger. And, and I'm not saying they probably are focused on the younger, but it hasn't made the impact yet at this point. Well, and you mentioned the, the role of the players. I mean, I think that Major League Baseball players are actually, it's probably the most powerful union in all of professional sports, yeah, which is, you know, good, good for them. I mean, they're making more money. The players are making more money now than they ever have. So they're not really incentivized to, to change, you know, economically to change the, the game. Everybody, the owners are making more. I and mean, the TV rights are outrageous. The money, it, yeah. So we were forced to change because literally couldn't pay ourselves and there was no money and there was no ticket. We sold two tickets. We were forced to change. It might be too late before MLB realizes that because they might keep making money, keep making money. But if you keep making money and keep losing fans, you're in trouble. We focus on fans first. Again, the name of our company. And we focus fans, 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 fans. That's how you build a brand. And then the money takes care of itself. I never thought merchandise would be doing what it's doing right now. It's laughable. I literally, when they shared me, I was like, wait, hundreds of people are buying every day. I'm like, how is that happening for a little team in Savannah, Georgia? Like that doesn't make any sense. And it, and it didn't happen right away. Six years in, the brand's being built. That's that's the indication. I We, we measure fans, we don't measure revenue. So like this year, we had 750,000 uh, new fans grow in social media. All right. We had 25,000 new fans buy merchandise or whatever. We measure the fans and we know that takes care of revenue. Is Major League Baseball measuring the fans or are they measuring the revenue?